This is Eitan Weinstein. And I'm Naor Menninger. And you're listening to Two Nice Jewish Boys. One of the fundamental questions that divide the right and left today all over the world is the question of agency. Are we in control of our lives or are our lives playing out some deterministic script? Are we non-playing characters in a reality-sized computer game? More than 200 episodes ago, we hosted Dr. Yaron Brook, chairman of the board of the Ayn Rand Institute on the podcast. One of the central tenets of Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism is that we are not NPCs in some video game. Well, not quite in those words. Rather, Rand claimed that it is our moral duty to selfishly pursue our own happiness. And at the basis of that claim is the idea that the individual rests at the center, and he or she or they are capable of shaping their own lives. Today, we are joined by another student of philosophy, another Ayn Rand fanboy, another man who also believes that we're all selfish, self-centered, joy-seeking bastards, and good on us for that. Natan Galulazar is a father of two, content creator, objectivist, musician several days a year, and public relations manager of an Israeli high-tech firm. We are super thrilled to be joined by Natan today, who previously we only knew on Twitter, to talk about objectivism, the Israeli right, abortion, and any other random topic that comes up, because why not? Yes, very thrilled to be here. Thank you so much, man. So how are you? Like I said, I'm thrilled. Uh, it's good to meet uh, the faces behind right. the uh, the avatars. Yeah, we were talking on the way up how you rarely meet anybody on Twitter. Yeah. Right? Like Facebook the, is for people you know and you meet occasionally. Twitter, it's like... In the early days of Israeli Twitter, you had tweet up, tweet meetings, like tweet ups. Uh, tweet ups? Yeah, they call it tweet ups uh, really? where people, yeah, hanged. Um, but I wasn't there to experience <laughs> yeah. I don't it. think anybody was there. <laughs> no. That's why they discontinued yeah. them. Yeah. So it remains. Nobody ever meets uh, yeah. on Twitter except for us. It's like a yeah. rule. Maybe it'll Re- change revolutionizing now. the. Maybe now Elon Musk will change it. Yeah. Yeah. The effects of Elon Musk's. So Elon Musk. where do we start? Um, how about <clears throat> killing unborn babies? Ooh, <laughs> that's always a nice conversation starter. <laughs> I like to bring it up at cocktail parties. <laughs> that's re- where you really want to start. Yeah, why yeah. not? Why not? We it, it, over it recently came up and we discussed it kind of on Twitter. Like there was right, like a back right. and forth. And I know this is actually one place we, like I think a lot of the things that we could discuss, we would probably yeah, we agree on agree 80% on. of the... We agree on a lot of things, probably like the individual's <laughs> right to liberty and individualism right. and the fact that we should all be pursuing our own goals and government non-interventional. It's very warm and, and that soothing stuff. in the echo chamber. Yeah, exactly. So I thought, you know, let's start with something no, we don't. It's, it's a hot topic right now and for good reasons. Um, yeah, sure, uh, let's delve right into it. Um, I was actually surprised <clears throat> to find out that Ayn Rand and objectivism actually supports uh the idea that uh a baby or or a fetus can be terminated all the way up until the moment it's born meaning it's not life until the moment of birth i don't want to go too much into what ayn rand said because i didn't actually she has um a few articles Mm. on the subject and i think i think in one article she says that you know it's the essential issue is the first trimester so up until the third, uh, the first trimester, uh, you know, abortions should be legal, and then you can kind of debate after that what happens. But then I I read somewhere that she, in, a, in a later article she she says that it should be up to, you know, until birth. <clears throat> so, um, I I personally agree with what she says that the, the essential issue lies in th- in the first trimester because then you kind of separate the whole. You know the the intrinsic. I mean, does hu- does human life have an intrinsic value? Like, does it matter that human beings exist? Like, is it important for the human race to, to you know to continue, or do you look at it as the objectivism you know philosophy uh, holds the, the the objective standard of their uh, values are objective? So 
what it means that it, it the the value is not intrinsic in itself okay values are values to someone so it matters to me that the human race exists like i want us to you know <laughs> exist tomorrow at least when i'm alive but when i'm dead like it doesn't matter mm -hmm. um now I, under I understand why it could you could kind of get confused and think oh you know this is kind of isn't that nihilism like you know that nothing matters but no object i mean objective values means that you find a relationship that's true to your life between what you want i mean be between you and the value that you're valuing um so so basically in the first trimester what what ayn rand says and you know i agree with her is that we're talking about a, a clump of, uh, of of cells. I mean, this is not a human being in any any you know f form. So I think anyone who says that it is 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 kind of he's pulling the, the 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 mystical, intrinsic kind of view of, of humanity. Like oh, you know, there's a soul from the beginning, and and uh, there are also other motivations, uh, religious motivations that. They're kind of anti-life and anti-sex. Uh, you know, they, they would not want you to use even uh, con contraception. Um, but, you know, I think if we can get past this first trimester issue, then the later trimesters, we can have a constructive mm -hmm. debate that would be a little bit more technical and it can be fiery and, you know, we can get kind of upset about it, but it, it won't be as... Um, Emotional, um, yeah, emotional uh, and insane, yeah, like, and like irrational, right? And irrational, like the debate is in the states. I think, I think anyone, many people can agree that you know, up until the the, the first, second trimester, it's really not a human being. I mean, it's just, it's uh, I think in in. I think it's called an embryo, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then you know I, I don't remember exactly when it becomes a fetus, but but I think I mean there's certainly people that would I might be one of them <laughs> I'm not okay. I'm not I'm not sure yet but uh, <laughs> but I think this is also part of the issue is that it's when discussing these things which are very philosophical uh, uh, debates it's hard to to compromise right because it's hard to compromise ration rash like your 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 rationale it's hard to compromise on logic like once you believe something or think something then it's hard to for example like sometimes i say you know what okay let's see that because whenever you bring up abortion a lot of the times on the left the counter argument is what about incestual rape right they immediately go to the most extreme example mm -hmm. what if a brother rapes a sister and it results in a pregnancy can you then abort the baby? And we spoke about this, that like less than a percent of uh, abortions Abortion in the in States, States are done because of rape. And I'm sure a tiny percentage of those are incestual rape. So obviously it's not that, but I'd say- How many also abort after the you know third trimester? Yeah, usually those are probably uh, I mean, aborted very early on. So I'd say, I'd say, I always say like, okay, let's say we concede that right we can uh, concede that uh, that argument and say okay you know what in the cases of incestual rape those would be allowed to be aborted can we now talk about the rest of the cases but even in that case yeah. as someone who believes like if the conservative <clears throat> argument is life begins at conception then it's not that life that baby's quote unquote that baby's fault that his mother was his mo his brother was his father was his mother's brother and raped her in order to create him. He's alive or she's alive, so you shouldn't be able to kill it. No, of course I agree. If if you think that you know from conception whatever you know it is, you think it's actual life, then yeah, you would be very emotional and you'd think that that's murder. I mean, I, I you know before I became an objectivist, I was kind of flirting with uh, religion and uh, so I, I was on that position. Um, but yes, but I think we should move towards a rational discussion, towards a rational uh, observation of the facts of reality. And uh, I, you know, I haven't seen any rational case to suggest that that it is an actual human life 
in the first trimester, like in the beginning, after conception. I mean, where, where is that argument? What, that, that it's a life? Yeah. Because I think the question is, where does the life begin? Like, okay, does it begin at the first breath? Because then you can take it back kind <clears throat> of... Uh, um, it's kind of like Xenox's paradox, right? Where like you keep taking half of the distance and you never close the distance. So it's like, it's similar in the sense that you, if you say it's at the moment they take their first breath and technically the baby could come out, not have breathed yet, and you could cut its head off and that would be fine abortion. Or if it's not, it's the second the head exits the, the, you know, vaginal, uh, whatever, right? Then, then if the head isn't all the way out, then you can abort it and you could take it a second back each way and say, where does life begin? But on the other hand, right. if life begins <clears throat> from conception, why do you implement only the right to live? What about other rights for the fetus? Like? I don't know. It has more rights, maybe. Like, why Why only like one afforda- right? Like affordable like cottage vo- cheese. Like uh, voting. <laughs> no, but it, yeah, it's true. Like, why... I mean, no. Even vote, even vote. children. <laughs> yeah, let, let let the mother vote to vote. vote twice. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. No, but but it make it, it is a good point because okay. because you don't give so okay so May, make make lemonade out of so. Noah's lemons. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, think about it because uh, an infant does not enjoy full rights like a like a grown adult, right? I mean, uh-huh. they, they, they yeah, don't. No, absolutely. They can't just do whatever they want, right? They are, I mean, legally, the parents are responsible uh, for many of their children's uh, actions. So, so yeah, this is a very fundamental philosophical issue where you have to kind of, first you have to define what rights mean. What, what are they in a social context? Like, what are rights? Why do we have rights? Where do they come from? Um, then you have to think about life. What is the definition of life? And the right to life. Is the right to life, do you see it as, I ask both of you, do you see it as something that the state gives you or that the constitution constitution gives you or that God gives you or you give yourself? Well, I think first it's important to define what what is life and then maybe yeah. you can define who, who gives the right to life. So how would you define um, what life is and where I thought about actually starting from rights because okay I, Rand has a good definition for life but I forget it um, I don't think I can just get it from the top of my head um, it, it's ba- life is basically um, I'll look it up while you tell it while yeah, you talk so about rights if, if you type Ayn Rand life on Google you should find the definition okay. um, so so rights derive from the facts of reality it's not given and it's not created. It's just something that we discover as human beings. Um, uh, facts about, about human life that, uh, like, what are our necessities? What do we need in order, what does man need in order to, sur- to survive in a social context? So if you, <clears throat> sorry, if you live alone in an island, there's no need for rights because no one can, you know, uh, yeah. Use coercion against you, so you wouldn't need rights. Yeah. Tigers w- wouldn't exactly. Care you can't, you respect cannot respect your uh... <laughs> exactly. You cannot reason with, <laughs> with tigers. Uh, hold up, man! Hold up. And, and there's yeah. there's a clue there about about the necessity of rights. So rights derive from man's um, essential characteristic, which is uh, he's a rational animal. Okay, that's the definition that Aristotle gave to man. But life existed <clears throat> for millennia without rights. So it's not a, a given. If, like, you can survive as a society without rights. Well, would you say that to a person who was, uh, you know, an a- who was butchered with an axe uh, because his, I don't know, his neighbor... No, uh, of course not, but... but so you're, you know when I'm you saying. say we're surviving as a, co- a collective, maybe, yeah, as a human yeah. race, but you as a, an individual entity, if you want to live the best life you can live, you need to ask, well, what do I need? Like, so, so first of all, your essential characteristic, I mean, your, your tool of survival is your mind. Okay, it's reason. We have a our, our reason to understand, to comprehend the world, and then we can use it uh, for product, productive uh capabilities and with that we can survive 
And what's the enemy of reason? It's force. Okay, if someone you know puts a gun to my head, I can't use I my thought, reason. I thought it's emotion. <laughs> But is that? Is no, it's not. Isn't it emotion the enemy of reason? Well, uh, uh, no. That's because emotion. It, 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 emotion is more complicated because emotion is you need emotion. Emotion mm -hmm. is not something that we don't need. The the the. The trick is to, or the, the, the complicated part is to synchronize emotion to your, to rational values. And then your emotions will indicate good things. So, you know, if you see a tiger, you should be scared. Like you should be motivated to be scared. Uh, but if you find out that it's just a paper tiger, like it's, it's just a, an illusion or something. So, okay. So now I, I know that I didn't need to be scared, but emotions are important Uh, a motivation tool, but they can also be destructive. It depends on your ideas and. Uh, so you say that violence is. The but violence is something that you don't control. It's out of your control. It's like just someone else just, you know, decides arbitrarily to use force against you, and there's nothing you can do about it. You, you can't reason with them. You can't say, okay, well, we have a dispute. Let's talk about it. Let's use our minds and see, you know, who's actually right. No, he just says, okay, no, I'm just going to punch you in the face. So. Force is the fundamental enemy of reason. Um, and that's why we need rights. We need rights so we can extract force out of society and live as civilized human beings, deal with, with each other uh, using reason, using our rational minds. But it's not necessarily <laughs> unique to humans as rational beings, to the whole concept of rights. I mean, maybe... The level of like individual rights is is um, unique to human beings, but there's uh, this group of monkeys. Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris talk about this at okay. one point. You know what I'm talking about? There's no. this group. Of, there's this type of monkeys that have. They talk about it in the context of power hierarchies, and they say that if the alpha monkey is like of a certain level of brutality, and he, you know, uh, kills other monkeys without justified reason or he just kind of is brutal and barbaric or i think it was actually no that he doesn't share food like uh, equally that he doesn't give the food out and he hogs all the food to himself and he doesn't feed all the other monkeys and he's not a fair king then two of the strongest monkeys in the pact will team up and tear him to bits and actually like eat him which is crazy. So it kind of seems like within that species, they do have a concept of rights. Like we have a right to food. And if you don't, as the king monkey, give us our food, we will, well, that's, you get what I'm saying? No, that's not how I think about reason. Um, I mean, animals may be very intelligent and they may even have free will in a very kind of limited context, but they don't have reason as, they, they don't have the faculty of, of, of reason like, like human beings do we have the ability to conceptualize our perceptions so we can think abstractly about about the world that's something that animals cannot and do. express those thoughts yes but um i mean a monkey would not understand what rights are he wouldn't he, he can't even like he can't even conceptualize the concept of a banana all right i mean he knows what a banana is like from a just the perceptual Uh, at the perceptual level, but he can't understand that. Oh, they're you know he just can't take all the bananas and put them in a single unit, and then have the concept banana, which Where's applies keeps which bananas. applies to all bananas in the world that he knows and doesn't even. Or at least know. we don't have proof that he can do it. Well, to the very least, I, I mean I don't see how animals have that capability. Otherwise, uh, we'd see them do what men do. Mm -hmm. We would see them build rockets and uh no bridges. it's to a very limited uh <laughs> extent but he has the ability to recognize a banana yeah he can recognize meaning because he keeps eating bananas so and no banana is the same banana for sure he <laughs> can recognize a banana right? but he cannot con conceptualize it he cannot have concepts in his mind um have you ever asked a monkey <laughs> I cannot because he, you know, he, he cannot conceptualize <laughs> and that's why he doesn't have language. Um, okay, you know, okay. which is, I mean, language really, you know, I see many people say that it's, it's so we can communicate with, with each other, but no language is so we can actually, it's a, it's a tool of knowledge for us, mm -hmm. for me. Like I speak language so I can understand the world. 
that's why I have concepts. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, I can send table, cup, uh, microphone. That helps me understand what I'm seeing in front of me. Um, so where were we? So, so yeah, we were we were ta- we were talking about, about the, where in, life begins and in Ryan's uh, definition of life. Did you find anything? Yeah, I did. I did. I think I did. Tell me if this is life is a process of self-sustaining and self-generated action. If an organism fails in that action, it dies. Its chemical elements remain, but its life goes out of existence. It is only the concept of life, quote unquote, that makes the concept of value, quote unquote, possible. It is only to a living entity that things can be good or evil. Right. Well, the first line is what's important for for. Read it context. again. The first line. Life is a process of self-sustaining and self-generated action. Yes. So life. But babies are not self-sustained. What she means when she says that is that your own body can sustain itself. So, mm. so this is why it's so important the, the the moment of birth because that's where when the fetus is separated from his mother and then his body is not dependent on her body anymore so we're talking about two separate individual beings and remember rights can only apply to individuals they cannot apply to to like two beings at once but even after the baby is born it's basically <laughs> dependent on the mother on but any it, mother it's dependent it, it on, on, on yeah, someone yeah. but it depends and like, it can like, be born prematurely and but we be need to be careful on... with the word dependence because it can mean different things in different contexts so when it's inside the womb then the dependency is on the body and then when it's outside the womb it depends on on action so even the baby i mean think about it he has certain actions that he needs to take in order to sur- sur- to survive he needs to you know suck on the on the nipple and breastfeed uh he needs to be able to to you know open his eyes and look and, and they you it. shouldn't assign gender to the uh, baby okay <laughs> uh i didn't know we were that kind of show uh we're not that kind of show so so um <laughs> his dependency becomes different and you know you can say that look today we're dependent on um i don't know on free trade we're dependent on you know the internet so this show will go up does that mean we're not independent entities on ourselves doesn't mean we're not no, but doing it, but, but you, you know it, it reminds me a little bit of you know obama's like you didn't build that you know yeah it's like you're not so so when you when we talk about dependency it it can mean different things in different contexts. So when she talks about self-sustained action, she means that the, the entity itself, the living organism, uh, is responsible for his own actions. Like he has this energy that he can sustain himself and act on his own. It doesn't mean that he can survive on his own, but he can he can act. And that action uh, helps him to, to survive. But but makes but, sense, man. Yeah, but I'm sorry. But the but you can ha- you can uh take a fetus outside of the womb prematurely and it so, will survive. Okay, so th- this is where the, the discussion becomes more technical. And um we can argue from the viability perspective that once it can survive outside the the wound, the womb, we can refer to it as like it's already an independent being because it technically it can survive so i i think this is a legitimate debate where we can kind of think about how we draw where we draw the line is it viability which is i think it's like the 24 week um but that's only because of technology no i think 24 weeks is the natural no but i mean come on a, a, a baby well, born at I'm 20 wrong. Maybe a, I'm wrong. You, you get what i'm saying though a baby extracted from the womb at 24 weeks no it won't survive se- without technology no four centuries ago would have been dead a hundred percent of the time right yeah and oh. and so i'm saying in in 200 years we might find that viability will happen at week one maybe okay. maybe we'll grow, be able you, you can grow them outside of like right. in a, well, an artificial womb no when i so okay so when i'm talking about that that's a good point when i'm talking about viability i mean natural viability because we can't just say technology um, because then, you know, like you said, it can be, I don't know, from moment but that, of But it does then, bring in an interesting factor into the debate, right? But, but by the way, that's why I'm not pro-viability. I'm actually pro-birth because I think that's the most consistent and there are no... Um, conf- not even birth, it's 
cut the cut the cutting so I, the, I thought about that too the cutting of the uh, what is it called? how do you call cord. it the umbilical cord yeah umbilical I, I umbilical. Pro- umbilical i can't pronounce it you pronounce it for me um so we have I, to come up with like a sign though so that whenever you want to say it you do like <laughs> yeah. so i think once you know w- w- once the birth starts like that's it like you, you can't go back from there a- and the 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 thing with the um, umbilical umbilical cord um i don't think i don't think uh you know it it doesn't cut itself like i think human beings since time immemorial had to mm-hmm. cut it mm-hmm. so so this is just something that nature so, so you can't put that you no, know it will because you can't just you know leave the baby with a you could because the the amb- ambiotic <laughs> sac comes out afterwards and then that whole just like the part that's still attached to the baby rots away and falls oh, off that's true so the whole thing would just rot away and fall that's off, true probably. so why do they cut it right away i don't because you don't want it attached to a big old sack that's bloody and and disgusting <laughs> right <laughs> like you don't want that thing like to carry it around to home and then have to i see so i think um, it would because i think i talked with someone about it and he, they they said that like it's it's not good for some health reason. To, uh, maybe. I don't maybe. know. Maybe but, it's like not good. It probably isn't good to carry around a big rotting piece of flesh <laughs> around your house. Yeah. So yeah. maybe uh, you know it's it's an interesting question. So what birth. they used to do. So birth so, but is, uh, yeah. is the moment. Uh, I think it's birth. You know, you can make cases for the viability, but again, I think it's uh, the the essential issue is you know if we could agree about the first trimester, then. But what is birth? <laughs> Uh, well birth is the birth of, no but like it comes I, out you know so the leg the foot the head you know what i mean no but seriously it's ve- it is it <laughs> isn't it's kind of a tricky uh because it's a it's a concept right you were speaking about concepts before it's a, the, the idea of birth is a concept but really it's an amalgamate like it's a it's a no birth is it's a process a, it's not a one exactly moment where you freeze. there are many many moments i mean Luckily, my wife had a really quick birth. It was about like forty minutes. I think she was in the in the in the wow. room giving birth. It was really first, quick, like an hour, one. forty minutes, something wow. like that. Yeah. But there are some women who are there, you know, eight hours, forty-eight hours, forty-eight heard, hours. Heard, yeah. Is it when the head starts coming out? Pticha, so, you know what I mean? Like what? W- I think that when it's ready to come out, that's it. Like it's saying, "I'm ready to leave." So when this the water breaks, when the moment of birth, I mean, look, you know, I, I, I think this is highly technical and I don't think this is the essence. Like this is not as essential. I, I know that people like to use that as a kind of a uh, counter argument, but you know, you could kind of use the same arguments for uh, conception, you know, like when is it like when the sperm leaves or when, it, like, how do you even know when exactly the conception happens? Uh, so we can always play this game. Um, I'm sure that if we sat down and actually thought about all the technicalities of, of, of birth, we could kind of, you know, come to an agreement about when that particular moment is. But like I said, the, the, the essential part is to kind of realize, okay, when does life begin? How do we define life? Um, and also, uh, you know, I didn't talk about it before, but Rand makes this distinction between the potential and the actual, which is very important because if you equate the potential, if, if you refer to a potential as an actual, then, you know, you're just being dishonest or, you know, you're being malevolent or I don't know. Like, yeah, but it's also kind of dishonest because <clears throat> it's not, it's not the same as like when you you posted the acorn is not a tree right like the acorn you would equate to the sperm right i i agree but uh, okay like i I agree that technically that wasn't the best analogy i I, I can't remember the other ones maybe the other ones were better like an egg is closer i guess yeah people don't understand what you're talking about it was a meme where there's a picture of an acorn it said this is not a tree a picture of an egg and said this is not a chicken and then a picture of an embryo or a fetus and said this is not a baby a a, a blueprint of of a house yeah blueprint of a house yeah look i agree but when you start the house and the and the acorn aren't so good but the egg kind of but let's say you have all the all the um you you know the the uh, uh, ingredients is that the right word of a house all the yeah materials 
materials and you start building it, it is a potential. Yeah, but again, it's not. House. It's not because it's, it's not, not a here, house yet. It's not all of the ingredients. It's not like you have sperm and an egg in two hands, and you're like, "This is a baby." No, you Unless have you're the like, worst cook in the world. You have human life with potential, meaning with like that's not the potential for human life. Like you have human life. Like if you don't do anything, you'll have a human life in ninety today. Thanks yeah, to but, technology, but in like ninety nine percent of cases. But but the. Uh, the, the principle of understanding the difference between a potential and actual is is the same. I mean, and like I said before, if you if you view human life as intrinsically valuable, then we will have a difficult time in this uh, debate because you'll say, well, you know, potentially it's a human. No, it's like you know, it's already valuable. It's human. Like, no, it's not. I mean, it, it may be valuable to, uh, you know, to the, the parents, but it's still not considered a human being uh, just from a rational perspective. And um, I, I mean, why do we have rights? We have rights so we can survive, right? So the, the decision about rights, rights need to be pro-life. They need it to, to help us survive. And the, the importance of having sex without you know worrying about the risk of getting pregnant or um knowing you have a plan b or c if something goes wrong basically yes and, and it is important like that's you know we should celebrate technology that enables us to do that because you know back in the day you got pregnant that's it like it doesn't matter your financial situation where your you know health situation like you had to go through with it so this kind of go takes us so, back to the uh, point uh, because that we you, need to, yeah. to remember the rights need to to be like their purpose is to allow to, to allow us to permit us to survive but, but it's, I, I want to ask about, you Aitan, but yeah. to you it's because people I think people like Ben Shapiro they they their stance derives from religion no i think so I no think the so. truth is no ben shapiro if you listen to him he talked no no he, he doesn't come on. he literally no he lit he literally says that it, halachically mm -hmm. there are uh there are there is a certain approach to abortion halachically the view is that uh it, life starts at conception but there are uh, certain rabbinic uh, uh, permissions that allow abortion in certain cases. And generally speaking, I think it's up until 40 or 49 days, like seven weeks, I think. But do you need to but have he, the permission of the rabbi in order to go yeah. through with it? Well, you see, yeah. so there you go. So, 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 But he believes that, that from what I've heard recently from him in these contexts, that uh, life begins at conception. Yeah, is, but is he, what I'm saying. No, but, but he, he, but I think he, he takes he, it from, But why does he think He deduces that? it from a biological, from a rational standpoint. What is it? W which is, and, I get, and this, I mean, oh. is, again, and I'm not sure I agree with Ben Shapiro, but, uh, but I don't find any more rationality in what you're saying. Meaning, the idea, again, because, first of all, I think consistency isn't necessarily the best way to uh derive when life just because there's a consistent point in time that we can say okay this is when life begins it's it's not necessarily a good argument right to say there are other points but like viability would have been the point i would chosen but there's not it's not consistent it's hard to say when that is so that w that isn't the point i don't know if that's a that's rational in my in my eyes but more than that birth isn't really a moment i can, there's not really a moment of birth that i can say right now the baby is um is born but there's not a moment of anything there is a life. moment of conception how, is how there? do you know there, what do you like, mean is there when the the egg penetrates but when the seed penetrates the egg no, but right. that's what I'm saying. It There's begins, no the head goes first, and then the tail. <laughs> there is no intervention. So without intervention, Wait, there is take conception. A, can you take a pill after? Uh... So that that's the debate, right? If if but, no, but you see, but then you you, you run into the same problems. No, but th that's what I'm saying. That you could say that no, you cannot take a pill because you cannot knowingly try to abort 
a life meaning you don't know when okay, so you don't know when conception has occurred but you can't actively take a pill in order to potentially kill uh, so you, you see uh, what you're uh, saying conceived here. baby so you see what you're saying here. you're saying that y- it's like saying you don't can know I so many carry things. a knife around and go like this and then you know just no, in that's case not the someone same thing. you don't even no, know i'm just saying in israel that would be a good you defense get, strategy <laughs> but you get what i'm saying like it's it's you can't take the the state. No, but, but the, 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 the rational stance to take after you 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 believe that would be no. You can't take the pill because you don't know if you've conceived this pill, which is only purpose is to abort. But that's uh, not a rational standard. You can't you can't um, you, you can't say okay. You can't do something because you don't know. You, you, things need to be based on facts, on facts of reality. You no, can't just I can't, say I can't throw. A stone off the top of the Eiffel Tower, right? Because there is the chance that I will kill someone down below. I'm just, I'm not allowed to do it. It's a very risky thing, right? A stone, there's no point for me to throw a, a huge stone off the top of the Eiffel Tower. I mean, there's no good reason. And the only thing that could happen from it is it'll land on someone's head and kill them. So it's like the same thing. I'm not allowed to swallow a pill that will only, the only thing. And what if it's, there's no conception? So why can't you take the pill? Because the only reason to take this pill, okay, so again, then you get into like, then you get into intent, right? Which is also a, an issue in, in murder cases. So yeah, if you can prove that, if someone can say, I took no, the pill the, I mean, because I heard there's vitamin C in it and they can prove in court that they took it because there was they were only trying to get the vitamin C out of fine. No, but, but do you like, understand what I'm saying? In usually, court, you won't be able to... Um, you get into cases of you, intent. You can't, but, but, in okay, court. but you can't... You can't say that she murdered anyone because you don't even know if she what was really concerned. No, but I'm just saying. Like, uh, there's the, no just saying. No, like, legally, you, legally could you need say, to base things You could on say facts. in the in the state of whatever Alabama, you are not allowed to sell, purchase, or consume pills, I, I, no, which purpose is to abort babies. I understand that you can't, but what would be the sentence? Would it be murder? It would. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it could be potentially. <laughs> you can't even prove it. <laughs> so. No, it could it, it could be potentially murder? Uh, I'm not it, sure. I'm, I feel like in the Tom Cruise movie, right? <laughs> the the one when he predicts potential med- murders. Yeah, uh, the minority, minority report. report. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, I look. I don't think. I don't think that's ra- rational. I don't think that's basing it on facts. And, and look, at the end of the day, the motivation here is just don't have sex without. Uh, con- contraption or, or contraceptive. Uh, con- con- uh, yeah, see, I, I can't say these. No, so. but I agree. That's that's also a huge. I uh, don't uh, understand the. Um, I don't understand meaning the idea that we're supposed to just be able to have sex willy nilly without dealing with the consequences doesn't make. Like that's also not a good argument. But one of the arguments you made on Twitter, which I think is really it's not good, fair because wait, you're married. I want to. You don't wait, 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 wait a minute. But what, what do you mean? But again, let's say. You you know you had sex and for some reason you know they you even used you know you, you put on a condom and she still got pregnant. I mean that happens. Yeah. So because of that risk, your li- your entire life is going to change and it's going to be ruined. That's, oh, but that, that's crazy that it's going to be ruined. It, 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 no, it could the be idea ruined. that it's going to be ruined. Yes, yeah, it you depends should, what age when you, you do when it. When you have sex, you should. And this no, takes there's us no to should. a whole discussion you should of enjoy, values. You should enjoy sex. No. You, should, you should spiritually enjoy <laughs> I mean, you it. You should enjoy sex. You should sex. do it without any worry. But you should have sex as a responsible you should, adult. It, no, you shouldn't have no worries. Yeah, you, you should have no worries. And and look, there that's are how, consequences. Like, uh, that's how AIDS wait happen. A minute. There, <laughs> wait a minute. There are consequences. I mean, having an abortion, you have to pay for it. It's not a, you know, it, it, it's not a, a fun process to go through. So th- those are the consequences. No, it shouldn't be I, yeah, the, I, the consequences of reality, not the consequences of arbitrarily, you know, saying that life is that's, but, an intrinsic value and and uh, that a clump of cells is actually a human being, and so you should be thrown to jail. I mean, that doesn't make how, any sense. So, so basically, the objectivist stance is that life has no objective, uh, uh, intrinsic value. Not intrinsic, no. Wow, it would be even a mistake to, you know, I thought. Like many people ask, well, what's the meaning of life? That like that's the wrong question. The wrong question is, what is the meaning of your life? Or what is the meaning you have made of for exactly? Your life? So yeah. that would be the objectivist take. It's not that life has a meaning. It's what meaning but it's do kind, you? It kind of 
to me, it goes back to the way you, you talked about emotions and, and rationality. And okay. you try to synchronize your emotions with your rationality. I think there is something to be said of the fact that you try, you should try to synchronize the meaning of your life with the meaning that should be for life. And there is a should. There is an intrinsic value and an intrinsic morality to life okay so here's where we defer and that's why we can't agree on abortion so it, it really is it really does come down to uh fundamentals and you know what do we think about the universe metaphysics and, and all of that um yeah Exp- elaborate the well, difference the, between you and Nathan. just opened up uh <laughs> like well, a- well the, the, look the the what ayn rand says you know this is kind of her Everybody kind of knows, you know, she says, A, you know, existence, existence exists. Like, that's the, the motto, right? Uh, and people are like, well, what is that? Yeah, of course existence exists. What's the big deal about that statement? But, tautological, no? But it's, no, it, it's such an important statement that, like, even if, even, uh, you know, as I learn more and more objectivism, like, I, I continue to learn how profound and important it is. What it means is that there's only one reality. And the, the, I think the, the proper way of thinking about it is that reality, is, it just exists. Like there's no right or wrong about reality, right? There's no truth and non-truth. Reality, reality just is. It just is. Like that's... So, so when people, you know, try to give intrinsic value to just things, they're... they're just thinking about reality in a wrong sense because reality just is like there's no good or bad about it or any meaning it just it's just a fact it just is reality doesn't and care about your feelings about your no about I mean, <laughs> about the way you perceive it um that's true that's true um you know francis bacon has a, a great line uh, that rand uh, she, she brings it up a lot uh, she says Na- he says nature to be commanded must be obeyed. Mm, Nature nice. to be commanded must be obeyed. Um, so that's, you know, w- when you think about that, it just changes your entire perception or in, in, in understanding of it, like everything. Um, so, Aiton, what I'm trying to wrap my head around this argument, me and maybe the listeners. Maybe we should close it too. No, yeah. no, no. It's 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 great. But so so, where do you, why do you disagree with the statement like you think life has a destiny sort of yeah i think i think not a destiny i don't know about destiny i i think that i think that there is there's there's something arrogant about the philosophers who try to really totally grasp the nature of existence in the sense that we can't and there is something to be said about the fact that that existence is larger than us and 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 you have to take some sort of leap of faith and you have to believe in something right like there is in my in my eyes there is there there is a leap of faith that is necessary in living life and this is why i think most people Jor- jordan peterson says this which i think is real most people live life as if they believe in god like they, like you you can't really ask someone if they believe in god to really know if they believe you have to because actions speak louder than words so you just have to ask yourself do they live as it do they act as if they believe in god and he thinks most people act as if they believe in god and i never really understood what he meant until I thought about it for a while, and I realized that there is a leap of faith, there is a belief that is necessary in order to conduct your life. You have to, because rationality only gets you so far, as we can see in this in this discussion. Like we can go, you know, scroll, scroll, round and round and round the rationality, and I can actually connect with some of the arguments you say, and then I give a counter argument, and I think it sounds rational and then you give a counter argument i think it sounds rational and at some point you have to make a judgment call and that judgment call i think is based on belief and that belief is based on on values and 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 i think which that are based there is, on your 
conception of reality. No, I think of that, existence. I think that there's something much deeper about it that we're not giving credit. Look, to. I mean, they're, like they're I think there's about something. Values? Yeah, there's something physiological <clears throat> about. Like I think there is something intrinsically wrong about murder, and it's not. It doesn't derive from the fact that I believe murder is wrong. And like, for, I had this discussion with my brother-in-law the other day, and he was telling me about this tribe in like Papua New Guinea where they like sexually abuse the children in some ritual early on. And I was like, okay. And he was trying to show me that like you know the values are are you just relative. everybody relative. Everybody can have their own values. And I said, you know, I don't know what the sexual abuse is there. Maybe it's like they make these kids just touch a penis or something, which is not that traumatic. But if they are, and I'm sorry for our listeners, please cover your ears if this is going to get graphic. But if they are anally Probing. penetrating these children at not a young age chicks. from, what, like, right? Uh, you, like, if a grown man is anally penetrating these children at a young age, there is no way that's not wrong and that is not seriously traumatic to those children. And there's something, there's something just biological about it, about coercion about the fact that I have autonomy over my body, about what is right and about what is wrong. And, and, and that, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like deeply ingrained in us that... Well, so was it deeply ingrained in the person who committed the, the act? No, they're godless. See, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think... Um, look, there's, there's a lot to say there. Uh, I, I actually, I want to go back a little bit and say that you know, in the, in your, again, I, I don't know that that's actually the ritual. So no, I understand. So you understand. get what I'm saying? Like maybe the ritual is slightly less but harmless. I, yeah. But I, I want to comment on something else that you said in the beginning. Um, I think it's exactly the opposite of what you're saying that, you know, you have to have belief and faith in order to survive. Because I think once there's a, um, you know, any, sorry, how do you say sedic? Crack. Well, once there's a crack in your view about Rupture. existence, just the smallest crack that you don't understand that like existence exists and that's it. If there's a, the smallest, like you're, you know, thinking, oh, well, maybe there's something else, maybe something greater. This leads to self-doubt, psychological self-doubt. And this will harm your life. When you understand that the world is what it is and you have the means to understand it with your rational faculty, that's when you that's from where you get the, the benevolent universe premise that you know you know that you can actually achieve your values. You can actually go out there and live a good life. That's what's so important about existence exists in the psychological level and you know in to your own life. Um, about the tribe. About the tribe, <laughs> I don't know what I want to say. About yeah, the when tribe. you say they're godless, this is where the argument, the discussion ends, because a rational person, an objectivist, can't give a counter argument to their godless ar ar argument. No, okay. No. So let me, let me. No, I mean, I just, I don't even know, like, where to approach that. Um, there was, there was an if statement in that. Like in that you're whole trying story, to say, what you right? were trying to say is, uh, it's so horribly bad that you know, like, we just know intrinsically but you know i disagree with you i think that human beings you know i agree with rand and john locke had the same view that men are born tabula rasa like we're we're born a blank slate we have no content in our minds so we have the the form we have the um we have all the hardware but we don't have the the software like we need to fill that out or fill it in um so we don't know what is right and wrong um we so where did it come from what come from values values meaning if we're tabula rasa at what point in existence why you know why did we end up here you're saying we could well, have easily ended up anywhere else in a world just ridden with murderers and values is something which you want to gain or keep that's values values are something that you want to gain or keep uh, so it's a very broad abstraction but i think you know it is true to every value and um and 
you base your values according to your beliefs, like according to your ideas. What, what do I believe? What's my ideology? You know, what, and, and basically, I mean, on the very high abstract level, philosophy shapes our values. And, well, if you want to get more specific, morality, ethics. So a, a certain code of ethics will shape your values. So, for example, for, uh, you know, a radical Islamist, he, his ideas will lead him to believe that, you know, blowing himself up in Tel Aviv is, is a great value. Um, so I'm not saying that values are relative and, you know, values, no, you can, you can have rational, objective values in your life. But those values need to um, derive from, you know, from a rational philosophy, from good ideas. Moreover, about. I think there is a hole in your in in your um, argument, Eitan, because you know if if your argument were true that there's something just mm, I don't know cosmically wrong about uh, uh, the rape of a child. Um, I mean, you know, I'm I'm reading now Game of Thrones from from the whole the whole thing. And it's quite good. And yeah, it any rem- rape, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Say, not, it doesn't I'm have to be a trial. I'm, get, I'm getting there because because <laughs> because uh, all you know, Game bad. of Thrones. It, it's it's inspired by how the Middle yeah. Ages were, in fact, and and it reminds you about the the history of of mankind because life did look a lot like Game of Thrones up until several hundred years ago. And for example, like you would marry uh, girls when they were twelve. Uh, or 13 and you you would bring babies with them now today it's considered child raping or child abusing right Mm -hmm. but for most of human existence it was it was uh you know you did it all the time so you're saying that from the dawn wait for from the dawn of man of human existence yeah it was wrong for tens of thousands of years it was, was wrong and just in the little blip of history which is the present it it we just realized it's no i'm trying wrong. to i I'm, i think first of all you're painting a picture as if up until the 20th century all men were marrying seven-year-olds and raping them against their will not and that's how old, we all got here but, but that's no but hold on that's not probably not accurate meaning for most of human history i think men and women adult men and women entered into relationships now adulthood might have been defined differently throughout human history but i think you for most human history most men and women entered into adult consensual relationships and yet there were for most human history yeah, I for, or for most of, i don't even of, know if rape was considered wrong uh it may be not even in the bible right am i correct no. What? Um, if if someone raped uh, your sister or, or something like that, like he had to marry her. No, you're and, not allowed to have sex before marriage. But yeah, I guess in marriage there. But that's what I'm saying is that I don't think that. Meaning, I don't believe that the 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 the. But, but can I you don't imagine believe the family someone... unit unit survived for so long with just men raping their wives no like any married man will tell you it's not that i don't rape my wife because i don't know she has rights today it's because i i i I love her and that love existed long before like women had rights meaning wait a minute the idea that like men were raping women just willy-nilly and that's how families were created is just this absurd idea we also need to make a distinction between just survival like physical survival and life because yeah people survived back 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 then but how did they survive They, they lived a miserable life you know they they what died when they were 30 they i mean didn't have any of the material wealth that we have now so i mean if you just look around you and you see like okay how does the world in the 20th century look compared to the world you know in the middle ages and there's a major difference there so yeah you can say well they survived but they didn't survive well no and the 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 role i mean the goal of life is not just to survive it's to to be happy I you would know? say that maybe they didn't survive well as a result of their lack of morality. Meaning there is something intrinsic it's about... It's not posit- intrinsic, like, it's just facts of reality. They didn't survive well because they didn't have good morality, I agree. But that's not intrinsic. It's based on the facts of reality. It's not that... You it's know, based it, on development of human what thought. Mean, what does that mean if not intrinsic? In, 
Meaning if reality resonates with certain values and you flourish. Intrinsic means that it's outside of reality. That there's a God and he decided. Intrinsic means it's like if, if something has intrinsic value, it means that it in itself has value. I'm not putting value on it, right? So if if reality, no, I think you're t- you're thinking about like economic value, but that's what intr- that. ah. So that maybe is intrinsic some in kind philosophy. of term in philosophy. Yes, yes. Ah. So intrinsic means okay. that it's <laughs> so maybe a, this whole discussion. <laughs> no, what is, the intrinsic is actually a term in what in philosophy in, in general and in well, objectivism. Um, well, there's 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 lots of confusion because there's like a look. Meaning I'm not, to I'm not an expert intrinsic. on philosophy. Like I, I myself, I'm just studying it. And, okay, and uh, so. You should take everything I say with a grain of salt. That's um, cool. We this is that's our favorite thing to do is to okay. bring non experts on and have non experts ourselves talk about uh, things. Great. That, um, <laughs> we hate the experts. Um. So, I, I mean, I think many people use the the concept objective when they speak about philosophy, but wh- when they talk when they say objective, they mean intrinsic. At least for for objectivists. Okay, so there's a, there's kind of a, ambiguity between those two concepts, objective like conflict and also it, and intrinsicism. Um, but the way objectivists see it is that intrinsicism means it's, it's, like you know doing something good, is it's good, despite reality. Like it doesn't matter. The conditions of reality don't matter. It's just it's good in itself. So you have different approaches. Like you can have also the secular argument for intrinsicism like Kant did. So he said, you know, you need to do something that's good despite of reality. So, you know, you need to, like duty, for example. He was a big proponent of duty. Um, But there's also the kind of religious uh, intrinsicist uh, argument, which is, well, what is is the good outside of reality? Well, it's, it's God's good. He decides what's good. And therefore, that's what we should do. Um, but you know, in the kind of objectivist understanding of the of the concept, is morality should be objective. So that means it it should be there should be a, a proper objective relationship between uh, between you know you and the results, like what you do. You're saying like if, for example, yeah, it, it does start with if didn't yeah if democracy if, this, if you want to live you need to do this yeah if democracy yielded uh immense human suffering then it would be a bad way of governance yes so it, it it's a i don't want to say it's a it's a, a it's a causal relationship it's a it's a morality that's based on causes but at the basis of that there is for example that if statement that the the if is the reason that the result that the uh, thing is bad is because the result is immense human suffering. So yeah. in immense human suffering, why is that bad? Well, because the, the only alternative that a living organism has is to live or to die. And why is life better than death? Because it just is. <laughs> why? <laughs> oh, well, well, okay. Isn't sorry. that I, a leap I, No, of faith? I, I thought you were going to ask something. Um, it's not that life is good in itself. It's just that life is, it's good to live because it's, it's good to be happy. Like why? Why, why is it good? Maybe because it's, it's happy not. Maybe because, death is better. Because it makes you, it makes you happy. Look, there could be certain contexts, okay? Like if you were now a prisoner in a concentration camp, that death would be better. So there's no like, I'm not saying like intrinsically, yes, you should always choose life. There are certain contexts where, where maybe it would be objectively good for you to die. For someone to kill you? No, for for just you to for die. You to choose so, to take your own life. Yeah, but I'm saying, why is my choice to live? Is my should I choose to live over than over dying? So, so there's no meaning. If I commit no, suicide, it's no, just as fine. No, there's by no. Anne Rand. It's well, I don't think she would say that it's fine, but there's no like. Um, the only thing that you should ask yourself is, if I want to live, what do I want to do? There's no like. You must live. No. In objectivism, there's no, there's no duty to live. If you want to live, w- you know what are the require- requirements for your for your life? And so then, you can take your own life according to objectivism. 
Well, like you it's, can, but it's, I, th- I mean, it's it's. It, but you could you could judge it as evil. You could judge it as if evil. Yes, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, like I said, it depends on the context. Do we have t- we have time for one yeah. last uh, topic? Sure. I have to bring it up. You know, um, fascinating, by the way. Yeah, really, really I love it. I love it. I love how uh, we thought we'd have nothing to talk about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was sitting with some friends uh, the other day, and um, I don't know. We started talking, and you know, we talked about this and about that, and um, suddenly they they started um, chanting about how much they hate the construction companies in Israel. The Kablanim, the construction. Chanting? No, not chanting. Not chanting. Okay, yeah, but, like, ranting, know, ranting. Ranting. About. Yeah. How much they hate. Ranting and complaining. Um, yeah. No, because I thought maybe they like, actually were like, <laughs> fuck the construction companies. <laughs> fuck the construction well, companies. Something like that. Well, something, <laughs> it's, something, like, it's a weird it outing. It's far from that. <laughs> um, because, you know, they were just, yeah, they're the, I hate them, is the quote. I hate them. They're, okay. they're the devil. And I'm like, why? They just, you know, they, it, yeah, they don't, they want to, they want to earn money. You want to earn money. We all want to earn money. They're not responsible for the fact that the state of Israel doesn't supply enough land and that the rules of construction are horrific and it's not their fault. Like they work with the rules of the game that they didn't create, right? Yeah. Uh, no, we hate them. We just hate them. Fuck them. Yes, basically. Did they give okay. any reason? Because the, the prices are high. They're, they're thieves, basically. They're thieves uh, who... Um, they're, they're, oh, that's the quote. <laughs> they're pigs. <laughs> <laughs> they're pigs. And I'm like, what do you mean by... Defi-? I was like, define pigs. And he was like, you know what? A I small think animal. <laughs> I think you know what it means. I'm like, no, no, I don't know. What is pigs to you? He's like, no, no, you know, you know. Let's not... Uh, he, he wouldn't define it. But th- because they're pigs... Okay, they're swines. Which leads me to the question, I think that that kind of, of perception is very common in Israel. Um, the hatred to, of, of rich, the hatred of success, um, the hatred of those who take care of themselves and think about themselves. And we're raised to, you know, give everything for the nation, give our lives for the nation, basically. Um... And Jewish values like life is more important than rights, for example. Um, so why do you think um, Israel is such a socialist country in that regard? I think it, it's very Kantian. Um, I think the, I mean, I don't know well enough the history of the kind of intellectual movements in Israel, but I think, I think Kant is a very prominent... Um, I think I, I heard your own Brook talk a little bit about this, that there were many kind of Jewish um, a- academics and thinkers who came to Israel and they formed the, they founded the uh, Hebrew University mm-hmm. and they kind of formed it after Immanuel's Kant's uh, philosophy. So they were kind of neo, uh, neo-Kantians. Mm, and many people <laughs> wouldn't know, even I'm not sure what it means. <clears throat> so, um, he well, was religious, right, Kant, wasn't he? Mm, he was raised religious. Ah. Uh, I'm not sure, though, like, if he continued to be religious. I know that his philosophical arguments were secular. So, I mean, Kant is one of the most important uh, philosophers of all time. And one of the, I would say, the most destructive ones. Like, today we live in a Kantian age. Like, this, every idea you hear basically... It comes in some form. Uh, you mean the progressive ideas, or not only the progressive ideas, okay. um, but I mean the progressive movement. Movement is definitely inspired by Kant. Um, you know, I would say you know, Nazism, communism. Uh, you know, all of the bad stuff. Um, it comes from Kant, and I think maybe they're mispronouncing his name. Uh, <laughs> and if they just pronounced it right the whole time, they would have been like, "Oh, is he's a Kant." <laughs> We shouldn't be listening to him. Well, he's a very bad... Fo- the thing about Khan is that he's very deceptive. So he, people, like, after the Holocaust, you know, they, 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 they're they able to point at Hegel and uh, Heidegger and, um, you know, even a little bit Nietzsche. And they can say, oh, you know, they were bad. They led to this. But Kant, 
he his status of like this um, enlightened thinker is you know it's it's and what still, did he say essentially? Well, he basically said that uh, reason is impotent. So he his entire philosophy was an attack against reason. And the thing is that people who are Kantian, they're talking in the name of reason. They're saying, we are rational. Like, we are rational, and they're attacking reason. They're saying, at the end of the day, you can't know anything. You can't even perceive reality as it is. Like, he says there are two different worlds, the noumenal and the phenomenal. Well, we don't have to get into that because I, you know, I'm not the, 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 the person to talk about that. But... um. I think that led Israel to accept collectivist ideas and to accept altruism, and that manifests itself in the end in uh, social in socialism. Um, What's wrong with altruism? Self-sacrifice. That. Um, But if I choose to it's, self-sacrifice, it's, it's my choice. No. <clears throat> um. Yeah, it's your choice. You, you can also choose to murder someone. Um, that's a choice. Um, yeah, but that yeah. that has bad implication mm. on another individual. I don't think Rand would be against not allowing you to. I don't know. Donate a million from a, dollars from a to legal a, perspective. No, yeah. but she would say that it's evil. Yeah, and I would agree with her. Um, I mean, look, altruism is not consistent in any way. You ca you cannot be an, a real altruist. I mean, what does that even mean? Like, who who would you sacrifice for? When? Um, wh where is the line? Like, do you sacrifice until you're almost dead? And then you say, okay, now I'll live a little bit for me. You know, I'll eat a little bit so I can sustain myself. And the next day I'll, you know, I'll continue just giving all my food until I'm also, again, I'm, you know, I'm starving and like, It's inconsistent. So, and I mean, it basically means that, you know, other lives are more important than you. And, or it doesn't even have to be lives. Like now, today, we have the green movement, which is like your life is even lower than the earth and, and sand and trees and, yeah. I just saw and worms. I sent you, know? you, right? The, I just saw a discussion on Twitter about someone was like, if Elon Musk was gave you a ticket to Mars, would you go? And someone was like, no, why would I go to Mars? We already fucked up our planet. Why would I want to fuck up Mars? And I was like, it just <laughs> blew my mind. I was like, what? Like you don't want to ruin an uninhabited planet? Which is already a Which is hole. just a wasteland of like uninhabitable land. You don't want to look. Because the planet is what? Worth something? And that, you know, I would argue that that's the, uh, that's the result of Kant. Like, yeah. th that's just nihilism. It's like s just hating human existence. It's just being anti-human. It's like, don't touch Mars. Like, but just don't yeah. exist. Like, you know. Uh, and again, like this, this comes back to values. Value is, it, it's like, in my opinion, it's not intrinsic. It's, it's a value to you. So if, if you, how is Mars like important or not important? Like we need to go there so it, it will have any value. Like it doesn't just sit there and have value, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in its own. Um, so humanity, humanity specifically, humanity creates value in 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 well, the universe. Individuals, or well, I would argue. But animals well, can't create value. Ayn Rand, she says that every living organism has value, mm -hmm. but like a plant would not know it. But the the, the values of plants are like sun and water, because that's how they sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. And for animals, it would be I don't know. Uh, food Worms, and plankton. yeah you know whatever um we we can conceptualize it and identify what values are um and, and we also have the special capability that we can actually create values because we can and by by creating i mean rearranging reality um to, to fit our needs as human beings like that's basically the special human uh power if you will um, so there's no so hope for, in for, her uh, in her eyes basically Value is anything that that uh, produces more happiness for the individual seeking it. It's like that's what the value is. So if I'm if I want to live longer, that that is my like I would want to extend life, and so my values are yeah. to 
have more food and eat healthy, obviously, because I don't want to well, eat just eat junk I, food endlessly until I die. I would die. say that happiness is obviously a value, but I would say it's happiness is like your ultimate goal. Um, but like you can have, you know, I'm not prepared for this because this is a very complicated, like values is very complicated. Uh, ethics in general is very complicated, but, um, you know, you, you can have uh, bad values, like you can value cigarettes, you know, and that's not good for your life. Um, so we need to differentiate between kind of optional values and rational values or rational or values that are good for your life. So uh, a, a person like yourself, who you say in your uh, in your blog that you devote your life to try and live uh, by objectivism, um, right? That's what you wrote there. Maybe it's not uh, yeah, relevant no, anymore. I, um, so how can a sure. person like you um, exist in such a country? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm trying to get to the bottom I'm, of I'm it. I'm trying to get to move to the States. Oh, uh, really? Yes. That's, you would like to to actually leave Israel. Yes, that's my with your family now. That's my and now. build build a life in the United States, basically. Yes. Wow. And so. and uh, do you have any connection to this? Do you have family in the states? Do you have? I have family. Um, not in a position to help me to move right now. Yeah. That's why I need to. Your wife is Israeli. Of, she's a, she's also American, actually. Ah, she. Yeah. Is. So your kids already. Well, have... we're both like Israelis. We grew up here, but. We happen ah, to so have... she doesn't have citizenship? No, she does. She does? Yes. You don't? I do. You do? Ah, so what's the problem? <laughs> I know. Okay. It's I know. It's People... other... Uh, yeah. No, uh, yeah. Like... It's okay I, if it's like personal or yeah, it's personal. Is it personal? It's, no, it's not that personal. Just uh, I don't know if it would be of interest to your listeners, but... Uh, well, we don't care about our listeners. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, guys. We love you. But we hope to think that our interests synchronize with our listeners' in interests. Intrinsically. That's what, we're, that's what we've been building this thing on yeah. for the past five years. It's worked somewhat. No, I mean, just yeah. personally, like, I, you know, I used to be more Zionist and... and you mm -hmm. still have on your Twitter feed some, you know, you can track some Zionism there. Or at least, like, you don't <laughs> hate the, the Jewish people. No, I mean, like I don't. <laughs> You're not anti-Semitic. That's, <laughs> that's like your baseline now. Yeah. Where no, look, are their standards I, gone? Look, wherever wherever there's, you know, where, wherever I can identify the good, I'll, I'll advocate passionately for the good. So. We are the good guys, is what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> you know, that it's, it's a. I love how a philosopher's a loaded, answer is never, is never <laughs> simple. No, it's a loaded question. <laughs> but I mean, look, when you like. You know, when, when there's war between Israel and, and the Arabs, so obviously, you know, there's no comparison between the two. Uh, Israel is on a much higher scale of good. Uh, it is deteriorating, though, in my opinion. I mean, the, well, the entire world is kind of going downhill, but... Except for um, Texas <laughs> and Florida. Um, so let's but, ask, let's but, ask but, a more interesting question yeah, than yeah. why can't you mm. go to the States right now, but why would you want to? So why do you want to move Because I think States? it would just better my life. Ah, okay. I think, uh, relatively speaking, it would be just better for my life. It would be a freer country. It will be... But your kids would be easier, the Jews. Will be the Jews. Um, not necessarily. I don't think it's a big deal. Like... Eitan? Well, I, I, I'll just refer you to our last episode with uh, Nilak Sigan. I think there we, no, we expound you had on our... Uh, look, there are people who look for it. Though, uh, me specifically? No, but my personal experiences, yeah, I had some experiences with uh, anti-Semitism, but nothing that I could say would have made me pick up my bags and leave. Like, that's not... I wasn't driven out as, more, as much as I was just raised to be Zionist and move here. Yeah. So it was more of a... It was more of a move here than a runaway from the there. The brother of my grandmother, I, yeah, who um, grew up in Minneapolis. I think they even went they went to St. Paul, and St. Paul was a very anti-Semitic city, and he used to get beat up every day in school wow. because he was Jewish. Yeah. Just every day, beat up. But he left. I mean, he. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But what I'm go what I was going to say is that the situation back then was much worse than it is today. And he managed to, you know, build himself a, a really good life in the end. Yeah. No, I mean, it, so, I'm sure it's much better 
So if I mean, he faced those circumstances, but it could go downhill at any point, <clears throat> right? Look, it could. It could go. You know, it, it's very difficult to know right now what's the best option, like on Earth. Like, if anyone knows, tell me. Yeah. And I will try to Tuscany. move there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, no horror feels like he knows. Yeah, no, it's it's a problem, but um, yeah, that's true. I mean, you're betting on a place. Yeah, there's no, but but I I don't you think would my get I don't your toilet think paper my... to your door within an hour in the states. Yeah, which doesn't <laughs> by happen. a little robot that yeah. dry, like a little Jeff Bezos robot. Yeah, um, it's one of the. Perks. I think my argument wouldn't work against you because I believe that I believe in preserving Jewish values and 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 i think that in the states the like jewish values have no future mostly like i think like if you want your kids and your kids kids to have jewish values and you want to believe that 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 you're going to be able to continue the existence of the jewish people and the jewish values then going to the states is kind of like a sure fire way of of like you know right so ensuring that's not but that's not important to you right that's why i'm glad that i yeah was able to get rid of those ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which would also be interesting to talk about, but maybe maybe another time, uh, because he said he was flirting with religion. So it's also interesting. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll ha- I yeah, think it's it not is... like I went into it, but I, uh, you know, I had an image like maybe one day, you know, I'll I'll, I'll be religious. You know, it, it was more like that. You mm-hmm. never know. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I know. <laughs> Um, wow, this is really, really interesting. I think we yeah. have to have you on again. Yeah, let's do this again it was sometime. A pleasure. It was Thank a pleasure. you so much for coming all the way from Kfaliona. Wow. Kfaliona. Yeah. For, for those of you in the States, Kfaliona is about... Israel's Minneapolis. It's basically. like 35, 40 minutes away, but yeah. In the States, it's like the uh, distance between two neighborhoods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not <laughs> even. It's like your neighbor. <laughs> yeah. in some yeah. rich neighborhoods, 35 yeah. minutes is down your driveway. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, so thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for coming. You tweet mostly in Hebrew, right? Uh, I do have a uh, a, twi- a new Twitter. Twitter handle in English. So okay, you can follow me there. It's um, the the Enlightened Examiner. Enlightened Examiner. If you yeah, or if you type Natan Galulazar, you'll find okay. me too. Okay, we'll put a or link. Enlightened Examiner. Um, yeah, I have a blog in English, so you can find me there too. Very cool. It's a really good blog, guys. I really recommend it. Yeah. He has a great... Did you translate the Corona article into English? I think you did. Yeah. I think... Um, it's not a... exactly the same, but I have an, or, yeah. uh, an essay about the Corona. A lot of good essays. Uh, check it out. Okay, guys. That is it. Thanks for listening. Um, go to twinjb.com slash donate. Yes, and help us out because we do this on our free time. Yeah, donate. It, uh, you know, we're... <laughs> Altruistically. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Self sacrifice <laughs> for this podcast. No, they're skip, not. It's not self sacrificing. Skip, skip dinner for a few not, nights. It shouldn't be slash donate. It should be slash support sacrifice. something oh, you that can donate. does you can, good for you. Oh, you can right? donate from a uh, self interested. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you, exactly. You, you share the same values. You want to promote. Just it would be much like. longer. Two NGB dot slash. Mm-hmm. Do something selfish by helping us out. Besides, exactly. our listeners, yeah. our listeners, like the program, be selfish, support it. Yeah, exactly. our listeners' existence is defined by our podcast. So there you go. That one you're gonna have to explain <laughs> to me after. But <laughs> bye, guys. thank you, and bye, guys. <laughs>